from Brooklyn, born and raised. Sunset Park to the south side of Williamsburg. I got kicked out of every school, and that's only because um, I was just never comfortable. And I'm like that now, I'm always moving, I'm always pacing. So I just moved from like PS 72 to Dewey Junior High School to, I went to Lincoln High School, then I went to Island Academy, Rikers Island Academy. And then that's where I, I, I received my degree, my, my diploma in Rikers Island. And, and, it, and I was well educated there, I had a great teacher there. He educated me really well and he prepared me for the world. So when I came out, I was very fortunate to never go back, you know. Yeah, it's always special to do New York. You know, I'm from New York. I'm born and raised here, and, and like, um, it's always good to just speak to my, my own kind because I, I really don't claim a race or anything more than I claim a, a community. And, uh, you know, so I really speak for my city, you know, and I try to give a lot of references towards my city so that they could get flashbacks on what they grew up on. You know? So tonight's about that. Tonight's about, like, really giving them back what they, their history. That's what, I, what I'm doing today. So, of course, you know, I'm going to bring it hard because that's what I was chosen to do, you know, have a little edge in my poetry. So, but this is about really tonight, man, I really want to give New York what they've been trying to hear for a long time, and that's just their, their own history and how important they've been in, in hip hop. You know, I just want to tell that story. And my side of the story, you know, I, I probably don't know it all, but I know my side. And I just want to say it. And I've been working on, I, when I write for deaf poetry, I write for this show. I don't pull out a piece and say, I'm going to do this. They ask me, yo, we want you to be on the show, and then I write. I'm, I'm a study poet. So I read a lot about Etheridge Knight, you know, I read a lot about the signifying toast like Dolomite and Boo Hill McCoy all the way 1920s. I know a lot about the beat poet and the beat generation. And that makes me a better poet when I try to write about myself and it gives me more formulas and different styles by knowing all this material. So I'm a big studier as much as I am a performer. You know, I read a lot and study a lot. Theater, I study theater as well so that I can enhance my performance. Because we're, we're performing artists up there, you know, this is a stage. Poetry is the text. When you get up on stage, you take the responsibility of the performing artist. And what great performing artists do is study. So I took that on. So my poetry has a lot of like, now I'm getting to the point where I'm being more autobiographical. Well, I've never done that in the last years, not even on Broadway. You didn't really hear too much about my life or about my mom or something. And now I'm getting there because people want to know that. I didn't want to shove that down nobody's throat until they really wanted to hear that side of me. So now I'm becoming more autobiographical. Where before it was about an ode, you know, it was about signifying a toast. Now it's more like I want to tell you my story, how I grew up. You know, before I got on Deaf Poetry, I had a show called Slanguage that I wrote. That was a theater show. And that was off Broadway, and that was really successful. And then um, I just shot two films with Spike Lee. I did She Hate Me, and I did Sucker Free City, and I'm going to work on his next film. And, uh, and then just growing relationships. It's about networking, really, really, you know, growing these relationships with people and letting them trust you after a while, because that's how they let you in. And so, you know, I want to be a great writer as much as I want to be a great actor. But I know that poetry took a lot of work, so I have to put a lot of work in to be a great actor and a great writer. You know? If I put in the work that I put into poetry, yeah, I'm going to make it. It's all work, you know? It's not, a, it's not a race, it's a marathon. It's an endurance when you want to become really good at something. You got to take your time learning it. So that when you get on stage, you look well-crafted. Spike Lee had saw me on Broadway doing deaf poetry. And, you know, to get the opportunity to work with him is, you know, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. You know, it's like, it's a dream. That's the dream, you know, it's the dream to be able to, to get a phone call from Spike, like, I want you in my film. Like, what? Don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay me. The opportunity to work with someone like that. And what's even better is that I've grown a relationship with him. You know, and he always wants me to be involved because he knows I'm all about learning. You know, he knows that I, I really want this. And he knows that I'll do anything it takes to make sure I do well in it. I didn't really have to audition. I had a good reputation. And, and that's what I tell poets who want to get on the show. It's about a reputation. Build your reputation and, and the walls will talk. You know, like most knew about me because I had a show called Slanguage while he was, while he was going to see Jeffrey Wright and Don Cheeto do Top Dog Underdog at the public. We had shared the same promotion. So every time somebody sat, to, sat down to see Top Dog Underdog, there was a flower with my picture on it doing Slanguage at the New York Theatre Workshop. So my reputation started to grow. So when they decided to do the pilot, my name was always up in the air, you know? So no, I, didn't, I auditioned, I basically I auditioned the second time as a confirmation. You know, it wasn't really like, a, oh, I wanted him to do that piece. It was more, I wanted to know, if Stan wanted to know if I was good like that, if I was consistent. And after the second time I auditioned, he never asked me again. He never like even thought twice about my integrity and he really respected it and he really like, honored it and I and, you know that's a really good thing to have when Stan Lathan comes up to you and says you're gifted you know 
you have to take that really strongly and then work on your gift. And he took, he took me everywhere, you know. I've, I've done many theaters and I've had many of my dreams fulfilled because of working on the show. You know, it's a beautiful thing. I love poetry. I would never stop doing it. I would never stop doing it because I love it so much. And I would want to teach it one day in a master class. And I hopefully get the young cats to come up and do it well because it's a performing art. I like to drill that in people's head, you know. This is a real art. Get up on stage and become that art, you know. I mean, I would like to work side by side with Denzel, you know, just because I think he has great theater chops and he transcended it into film really well. I'm big on theater, you know, like I have this musical that I'm working on that hasn't been picked up, but I've been working on for four years and it's about Biggie, Notorious B.I.G., and it's called the Notoriously Big Musical. And so I want to do theater, you know, I want to do my own musicals and I want to be able to do a hip hop musical that works really well on Broadway because, you know, it's really hard to make it work because there's a lot of magic in bro on Broadway stages, you know, that's all. I would love to do Broadway forever, you know? Have you spoken with his mother? No, actually I haven't spoken to his, to his mom and um, just in the middle of, I'm just in the middle of making the magic happen, you know? To write a Broadway show, to write a Broadway musical, it takes a lot of magic, a lot of finding magic so that the audience walks out with their lives changed somehow. You can't do that through video, music videos, or you can't do that through film, rarely. But theater, in order to have a successful show, it has to be life changing. That's why we were so great, even though we didn't sell as many tickets as we wanted to, but we, were, we had a great impact. That's how we got the Tony Award.